Yeah. Hey, so funny story. I actually had a lecture yesterday and I demoed Azure Information Protection. I recorded the meeting for my mentees and then realized that the meeting recording quality sucked. So now I've decided to just go ahead and do everything all over again. And um, if I'm going to do it again, I figure I might as well share it with everyone. All right. I'm going to go ahead and demo Azure Information Protection. We will not be taking a deep dive into it. I'm just going to show you guys how to install it and how to use it and just basically give you a general idea of what it's all about. Okay. Azure Information Protection is made to protect your information. Think of it as documentation protection. So it basically means I can take a document like this happy birthday document here and I can put certain restrictions on it, meaning I can dictate who I want to be authorized to either view or print or edit this document. So for instance, if I only want you and I to see this document, I will indicate that only your email and my email have access to it. So if you don't have those email credentials, you will not be able to see this document. All right. So let's get right into it so I can show you guys a little bit more of what I mean. So we have a happy birthday document here, right? You can see it's just plain um, regular document. And if you notice, there's nothing here on the toolbar, right? Something's going to pop up later that I'm going to show you. In order to utilize Azure Information Protection, you'll need to have a certain type of license. You can go to office.com. They should be able to tell you which license offers Azure Information Protection. In addition, the device that you're using also needs to have the AIP client. Azure Information Protection, by the way, is short for AIP. All right, so we have the license. Let's go ahead and install the AIP client. We'll go ahead and open up our web browser. From here, we'll type in Azure Information Protection Download. So we'll go ahead and select this link right here um, because it says Microsoft.com. Make sure it says Microsoft.com. Don't get fished, people. All right, it'll take us to the screen. And we want to go ahead and select Download. We'll go ahead and select the first executable. We'll select next. And you can see it downloaded right there. All right, it's been downloaded. Now let's go ahead and open it. We'll run it. And agree to the terms. All right, let's go ahead and select close. Gonna minimize my screen here. Let's go ahead and open that document back up, shall we? Let me close it out and reopen it. And you can see right here, Microsoft Azure Information Protection is now being incorporated with Microsoft Word. Um, AIP is now integrated with all my Office applications. And would you look at that? My classification labels have now been listed on my toolbar, which is great. I've, I've already configured what classifications that I would like. For us, you know, personal is for non-business data. As um, employees want to create documents, they can um, for themselves, family pictures, and things like that. You can use the personal label. For public, um, this is business data that has been approved to be sent out to the public. And then you have your confidential, which has a drop down. We have employees only. What this means is if I were to select the employee only label, this document can only be viewed by anyone with a PJ Pros account. And with the custom label, I can get more granular. Well, I can select if I want the recipients to view only, they can view and edit, co-author it. Um, they can view, edit, copy, and print the document. Or if I just want to give them a co-owner, meaning they have all permission. In, in which case they can also change the classification. Only a co-owner can change classification, by the way. The next box is where I indicate the user email address. I can also set an expiration date for the document, meaning the date that I want to revoke their access. And then I have board members only, right? Documents that I only want leadership folks to see. So for this document, it is currently set on our default classification, which is public. However, I would like to change the classification to employees only because I don't want anybody outside of PJ Pros to see it. So I'm going to select confidential and select employees only. Let's go ahead and save this document. And now my document is now protected to be viewed by employees only. And now I'm going to go ahead and email it using Outlook. 
And if you look at my Outlook window, I also have the same classification labels that I can select on my email. Don't confuse your email with your documents, right? This is classifying the email message. The document has its own classification. So if my email was classified as employees only, well, guess what? If I sent this email to a Gmail account, they will not be able to open up the email at all. But we'll leave this email as public because I only want you guys to see the protection on the document and not the email itself. So I'm going to send it over to my Yahoo email, attach the same document, the birthday document. And here, Microsoft has detected that this document is protected and it's recommending that I change my email to employees only so that it can match the classification level of the document. I'm going to go ahead and dismiss that. But you should follow the same classification for your email that matches your document. So I'm going to say see attached. And then we're going to go ahead and send it over to my Yahoo email. I want to show you guys what happens when someone who is not authorized tries to open up a classified document. Okay, we are now in my Yahoo email. All right, and you can see the body of the email where I says see attached. Um, at this email been classified for PJ Pro's employees only, you will not be able to see the body of this email. But because I did not classify this email, you can see the body. But remember, the document itself was classified. So let's go ahead and try to download it. And you can see already that it's encrypted. You cannot make it out. But let's go ahead and save it. I want to show you guys what happens when you try to open it. Well, let me open the folder where it's stored. And if I try to open it, you see WordPad cannot open this document. And it's just a bunch of gibberish. So the document is essentially useless unless I actually enter my PJ Pro's email account credentials. All right. So that's pretty much all I want to show you guys with Azure Information Protection. It's a really cool technology to have in your environment if you want to protect your data, especially if you have proprietary information that you don't want being leaked. You can really set strict parameters around who can see or even view your documents. And there's more capabilities to it. You haven't even seen half of its capability on this demo, but I want to keep it short just to kind of give you guys an idea of what it does. All right. See you in the next one.